Hello, welcome. My name is John Brunswick and we're going to be looking at a fictional company called The Kiosk today. The Kiosk has done a great job marketing through their digital and traditional channels, but they're looking to increase the brand affinity of their customers and prospects with The Kiosk. Now, in today's example, we're going to be taking advantage of some things because of our connectivity. So, at this point, pretty much everybody is connected in some fashion. And because of that connection, we have an opportunity to have another point of contact with that individual. What we also have the opportunity to do is make it a great touch point, do something to enhance that interaction and ultimately the perception of the brand to that consumer. In today's example, we're going to be following Steve Innovation. Steve Innovation is going to be a visitor in a mall where the kiosk happens to have a store. And because Steve is connected, Steve will actually get an alert that guides him to the store to have an interactive experience with the kiosk. Now, well, in the store, Jenny, who is a store associate, is going to be able to get insights into things that could benefit Steve that she simply couldn't before. Because of Steve's engagement, she's going to be able to give him special offers, information, and things that aren't overtly selling, but are adding value to their relationship. Lastly, from a marketing and store manager standpoint, all of a sudden the kiosk has insight into what's trending. What are people looking at that maybe they're not ultimately purchasing? How can they ultimately make the experience for Steve, the end customer, better? We're going to be doing all of this using Salesforce One and the Salesforce One platform. So our journey starts at the mall with Steve as he's walking. Let's join Steve. As Steve is walking, he receives a message inviting him to come use the kiosk. A welcome screen appears leading him toward the kiosk. Based on his proximity when he nears the actual area, a button appears allowing him to use the kiosk. Now as Steve neared the kiosk, a couple of key things happened. First of all, the kiosk responded to Steve's motion and brought up a series of ways in which he could start to interact with the kiosk. We can see here that he could use a traditional QR code that he may be received via email or another form of communication. He could use the application that he's currently running, or he could sign up with an email address. Any of these interactions are supported underneath the covers by Salesforce communities because we're looking at the entire journey of that individual and not just this sole interaction. In Steve's case, when he neared the kiosk, his application updated to show a Use Kiosk button. So he could simply press the button to start using the kiosk. When he does this, we're actually going to also see the store associate view. When Steve logs in using the Use Kiosk button, he's greeted and a series of instructions to use the kiosk are displayed. He can also see his recently viewed items and we can see he's a big fan of coffee and most recently he looked at the Bonjour Roast. Now, the associate can get a sense of who Steve is to best serve him. We can see that Steve's been a member since 2010, the number of visits he's had, if he has any favorites, as well as the history of items like the Bonjour Roast. In order to see how this helps to deepen engagement as Steve interacts with the kiosk, let's start using it. Steve walks over to the featured products table and is excited to see two products that are new to the kiosk. He sees a wine and he's not familiar with the vineyard, so he's curious. He places it on the table and in a moment the kiosk will update to show rich details about this particular wine and the processes around growing and creating the wine. And so Steve can take a look here, browse through some different details, and do some exploration on his own to get educated about this particular wine. Now as he's doing this, you could see that Jenny's view updated. 
And Jenny can still see all the original profile information, but she can also now see value added events. She sees a winery tour in addition to a pairing event, learning how to pair food and wines together. Now, if Steve was really, really interested in the wine, this would be great value that he otherwise might not have access to. So Steve is really more of a coffee guy though. And he's pretty excited because he hasn't seen this particular roast before. So he goes ahead and places it on the kiosk. And in a moment, again, the display will update with all of the information specific to this given item. And we can see that as Steve has been using the tabletop, his recently viewed items have been updating and he's gotten the new information along with Jenny. And we can see here that Jenny has two events which might be right up Steve's alley. There's a whole history of Kona coffee and there's also a meet and greet with some roast masters. And she can see the date that it's occurring and she can go up to Steve and say, Mr. Innovation, um, there's a terrific event coming up. It's members only. We'd love it if you could join. And that's something that adds a lot of value for Steve. Now, in addition to what we're seeing here, we could use the Salesforce Marketing Cloud to enrich the view with even more predictive analytics and suggestions around things that Steve might like. But the in-store engagement adds things on top of that. As far as the value that Steve feels with the brand, it's a very personal connection when the associate is able to engage with him. Now Steve really likes this, so he's gonna go ahead and add it to his favorites. And we'll notice that it now shows in Steve's favorites list. The nice part about this is because again, we're using the Salesforce Communities technology, no matter where Steve goes, he's gonna have access to all of this. So overall, between the digital and physical interaction, the higher levels of engagement, this is a tremendous opportunity to begin to take steps to build deeper brand affinity. Now, we've taken a look at Steve's experience. We've taken a look at Jenny's experience. Let's look a little bit at the analytics because everything that has gone on here could be very telling to a business about what's hot, about what strategies are working and what needs adjustment. Let's take a look at the analytics. Because all the interactions that we've seen throughout these demonstrations are captured, we have an opportunity to look at that information to better the experience. We can see here that Janet was following that Madison Avenue store where all of the interactions that Steve was doing with the products were taking place. And if we go ahead and navigate on the left-hand side to Janet's dashboards, we can see that she has a store manager dashboard. And each time, again, there was an interaction, we actually behind the scenes were capturing it so that we could see what was being effective or maybe what needed adjustment. We can see here, for instance, that this particular hat within the store was selling like crazy, but the Pinot Noir was not selling at all. So maybe that's something that we want to put some additional promotional weight behind or rethink. We also have statistics around the demographics visiting each store. Where were people coming from that were ending up at certain locations? And Overall, what was the traffic like at each one of those locations? The nice thing is that this is all inherent to the system. This isn't something that needed to be built out in a separate application, and it required no development. It's reusing things that the kiosk company already had, and it gives Janet insight to make her the best possible store manager that she can be.